Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday Thoughts. Over the past few weeks, Pastor Terry has been sharing some of his thoughts with you, and I wanted to take some time today to share some of my thoughts with you about what's been going on over these last few weeks. Spring is finally here. It's a wonderful time of the year. For us here in Minnesota, we wait through long months of cold and snow for the awakening of things that once appeared dead. As the daylight grows longer, the gray and black of the trees begin to push out and bring on a dusting of green, and plants and flowers begin to push out from hard, dead soil. Spring has traditionally been a season of hope, highlighted by the joy and promise of Easter. Proms, graduations, and weddings begin to fill our calendars, and we look forward to seeing family and friends that have long been unseen. But this year is different. Because of the coronavirus, those things that once held joy for us are now the sources of deep grief. This year, there will be no proms, no formal graduations, events that some have anticipated from the time they've been young children. Weddings have been postponed or canceled. We have not been able to gather to welcome new members into our midst through the waters of baptism. and We can't even comfort friends and families at a funeral. This year, the spring of 2020, this season of hope and joy has become one of fear and sorrow. It's been exactly seven weeks now since I was last able to hold four of my nine grandchildren. It's been a lot longer since I was able to hold the other five. The youngest of them, Kason, was just Eight months old, the last time I got to kiss his chunky little cheeks or feel him nestle deep into my neck, he now is 10 months old. I wanted to share pictures of him. This is a picture of him seven weeks ago. And this is a picture my daughter sent to me yesterday. You know, the heartache that I feel at having missed the milestones of his first year is really immense. I missed his first teeth, his first words. Now he's scooting around on the floor, pretty close to crawling, and he's pulling himself up by the furniture. All of it I've had to witness from afar. During FaceTime visits, I can see that he's really not quite sure who I am, and that grieves me. But this grief that I feel is not unique to me. We are actually in a time of corporate grief, a shared time of sorrow and fear. We all have our individual issues that we are facing. How long will this go on? What if a loved one contracts the virus? What if I contract the virus? Will I be someone who ends up dying all alone? How is this going to impact my finances? Not only for the short term, but for the long term. Are things ever going to go back to normal? All of these are valid questions and concerns. You know, in Matthew 6, Jesus tells us not to worry about anything. Therefore, I tell you, he says, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. But that's not so easy during a pandemic, is it? A time where friends and family are most needed, and yet we can't sit next to them. We can't hold their hand. We can't hug them. Sometimes the isolation and the yearning for human touch can seem unbearable. How is it really even human possibly not to worry? 
I think we're right to grieve, my friends. All of us, every single one of us, have much that we have had to give up or that we've lost. And it's okay for us to shed a tear or to cry out in righteous anger. We need to allow ourselves the space to feel these feelings. But at the same time, we can't allow ourselves to become mired in them. This is what Psalm 34 says. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. God is near. God saves us, not by making our troubles disappear, but by, near, but by being near to us and reminding us that these things no longer have power over us. You see, Jesus came so that we might find joy, even in the midst of sorrow. Jesus came so that we might see light, even in the midst of our darkest days. And Jesus came so that we might find hope, even when all seems hopeless. As we grieve, and as we look at all that this virus has stolen from us, I want to invite you to open your hearts and also see the unexpected gifts that we have received. To see, even in the midst of that which we have lost, the things that we have gained. Now, while I haven't been able to hold my beloved grand littles, I am so deeply grateful that I live in an era where I can talk to them in real life time via FaceTime, that I can see them live that I can do things with them like play games, read bedtime stories. I'm grateful that I can turn on the TV and hear the news, watch a game show or a movie or a documentary. I'm grateful that I can call my dad and check in on him, talk to him and know that he is doing okay and he's still healthy. And I'm grateful that I can do that with any member of my family and my friends. I'm grateful that I have the extra time to do some things that I like to indulge in that I don't always have time for, like reading, knitting, or quilting. I spent some of the time that I've had at home catching up on tasks that I've been putting off for far too long. I'm grateful that my husband makes sure that I have more than enough good food to eat and that we have a safe comfortable place to shelter in and on the days when the weather is good that we can get out and walk or take the boat out on the lake and enjoy the beauty of God's creation and even on a larger scale I'm grateful that Mother Earth is experiencing cleaner clearer skies throughout the world than she's seen in decades and that animals and aquatic beings are showing up in places that they've never even been seen before we are seeing unbelievably creative ways to work and stay connected. Ways that most likely are going to stay with us and change how we move forward into the future. This challenge has given birth to new ways of thinking that will open up many possibilities in the future. Dear friends, this is an extremely difficult time for all of us. A time that has taken much from us. But it is also a time when we can recognize all that we do have, all that we have received because of this experience. In all of this then, I pray that you will remember that God walks with us, inviting us to turn from the darkness to face the light, to find joy in what we have and what we can do, to recognize hope, even in the midst of despair. But most of all, I pray you will remember and feel the deep and abiding love our holy God feels for each and every one of us. Paul says, Who will separate us from the love of Christ? 
Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Blessings, my friends. Keep well.